Miss me when I'm gone, miss me when I'm gone Blowing, blowing, blowing up my phone No, I'm not at home, just leave me alone This is Gabrielle, or I'm Scorpius, your satanic witch here For another Daily Tarot Namaste to those joining for the first time Welcome back to those already here with me and watching um, So, we are going to do a quick overview um, for the last tarot that we did Which was the 1st of June, I skipped a Sunday um, Fire in the back uh, So, <laughs> we skipped a Sunday And um, last tarot was Motions of the Oceans so Definitely was still rolling with that um, Belial appeared with the Pisces energies of practicality and spirituality. Pisces has a foot in both doors of uh, growth and action. So he's taking practical action and movements both spiritually and on the physical realm, um, not neglecting one or the other. We had the star reader appear, which was kind of acknowledging the fact that you're not just the things that appear on the physical realm. You're also a spirit um, who's receiving messages from, as above, uh, spirit mind and bringing it down to earth. Um, and we did get our Ace of Dragon, which was a representation of that, and the major energies kind of surrounding us was a little nervous. <laughs> was um, the Self and the Maiden card. Um, self is was basically kind of really integrating um, into yourself and kind of dissecting in what ways you follow others, um, are you being authentic and true to your authentic self and really breaking down what it is to be self and a leader of self instead of following others, which is more like being authentic simply to yourself. And then we got all the water elements coming up with the king of water being a masculine energy, again with action. Um, and emotions and the counselor also came up showing that there is a great need for some action in our emotional waters um, and understanding the ways in which our emotions are triggered which throws us off harmony harmony was also a big theme in the first of july um, even with the self card the ten of fire um, and that pisces energy with the 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 rest and work rest and work spirit and and earth you know spirit and practicality and yin and yang um, keeping these cycles going being aware that there's cycles to keep going through um, and through that process you're continuing the transformation of your spirit gaining more growth um, which is the main thing maintaining uh, with the earth elements that came up with the three of earth maintaining what you have gained on a practical earth uh, level um, maintaining that and maintaining it in a way that it grows so, um, like I said, there's always work to be done, whether you're in darkness or in light. There's something to gain in both knowledge to bring to the surface, to your conscious awareness. So, awesome stuff. So, I'm really, really, really excited to see how the energy has shifted. Because um, I've been feeling funky fresh. I don't know what it is. It's weird, emotionally weird. Like, I think I had a day I was just freaking just crying for no damn reason. I'm like, you're just going through some stuff. Like, I was just thinking emotionally. Um, and so I was really feeling Cancer's motions of the oceans, I'll tell you that. Thank you, Cancer season. <laughs> um, cancers really like to bring up uh, kind of emotional traumas and emotional joys as well. Because, you know, one thing we have to remember is that, like, even when we're talking about trauma, there's also good things to be find found in shadow um, positive aspects of yourself that you've suppressed because of fear, harm, pain, and all of these things. Um, so all of those can, emotions is a good, good way to find these traumas and mental, mental patterns and emotional patterns. I feel like these are the things that drive the physical in one way or the other. Um, usually if the physical is in out of disharmony, there's something going on that's not in harmony mentally and emotionally. And to me, these aspects being not seen are closer to spirit than the physical. Um, even though the physical is still connected because your spirit is in your avatar, you need a body. <laughs> you need to take care of your body. Um, so that's my spew <laughs> on our review, um, our color, and our daily quote. Shoot, I still haven't made that quote jar. I've been thinking about it. It's been on my brain because I think it would be so cool to see what would come out. Um, so, damn. I ain't got one. <laughs> I thought I was going to think of one. None, nothing came to me. Um, so, we might just pull a quote card. Let's do that now. 
That works. See, as I figured with more of these tarot cards, because there's so many tarot cards, there's so many oracles, and these oracles are useful. Like, they have quotes made for oracles. Like, so many. I'm going to get more of these. <laughs> and also some of my own knickknacks. But let's pull one of these for our daily quote. Our color today, we can go over that while we shuffle, is red. I was thinking um, a darker color like black. Um, but this doesn't have black. It wouldn't make sense. You couldn't see anything. It's not... <laughs> You look, it's not visually pleasing to anybody. Um, so I chose red. Now, I don't know why I chose red. That's kind of just how I'm feeling. And we're going to figure out why red wanted to come out. We got two cards here. Uh, I want just one. Let me just... <laughs> I just want one. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Thank you. We got two again. <laughs> Alright, two want to come out. We're going to read two. Okay, so our first quote to start the day. Well, the reading. Um, when I lean on creativity and faith, I change my mind about the world I see. When I lean on creative creativity and, oh, cert oh my God, it says certainty. I saw, okay, we'll figure out why I was saying creativity. When I lean on certainty and faith, I change my mind about the world I see. When I lean on certainty and faith, I change my mind about the world I see. And so I feel like this is speaking heavily with the first of the month reading with um, the self card um, and self actualization and being authentic to yourself. Um, I feel like the I is your perception. You, everyone is living their own reality based off of what they perceive. What you perceive is based off of your level of consciousness, what your, your mind is thinking <laughs> and creating. Um, and believing in dogmas and clinging on to and identities and personas and what shadows are lurking <laughs> and you know the eye interesting so maybe we need it to to tie in it wanted maybe the cars maybe spirit wants to tie in the first of July with this one so the next one is my energy creates my reality oh, what I focus on is what will manifest. Dude, I didn't read these before I was reading them to you. I don't... That's weird. My energy creates my reality. What I focus on, I will manifest. I think I posted today, uh, this morning, a quote. Um, what I feel I attract. What I imagine I become. Um, and I forget the third one. Um, hmm. I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up really quickly. Just give me a second so I can look that up. Because this is all weirdly tying in. And so these cards are gonna be funny. Um, I think it's definitely going to be, uh, something to really tie in, uh, the self card and creating our realities in, in areas um, maybe maintaining coming up again. So the quote is, what I feel I, I attract, what I think I create, what we imagine we become. Um, what we feel we attract, <laughs> what we think we create, what we imagine we become. Very, very interesting. So that's leading us very awesome, heavy already. I don't even know what to say. So, um, <laughs> Uh, anyone interested in personal readings, I am still offering those. Um, we have a two for 30 deal. You get two readings. All my readings, you get three questions. And then I have a one for 20 deal. Um, I pretty much read on almost everything. Uh, what are they thinking, feeling, and doing? Romantic readings. Um, are they coming back? Um, I will read for your guides, your spirit guides, your angels, your demons. Um, where should I go? Which direction? Um, I do not do readings on financial or medical. So, um, if you are interested in like 
collective free pick a cards i do have those on my youtube channel um they are general and collective so some things may resonate some some may not so you take what resonate leave what does not but those are free um i have been trying to catch up with those pick a cards um i'm just going to be uploading the six six portal a pick a card um basically what what you need to hear regarding that portal opening um, and I think I just finished the Strawberry Moon one. I posted that very late, <laughs> but it's there. It's timeless. Time is fluid. <laughs> so anyways, um, I would like to thank everyone who has been messaging me. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about, uh, spell work, uh, doing spell work for others. I do not do that. Um, I only read cards. I only tap into the collective tap into the individual for you um tap into spirit but as far as spell work i don't know if i'm ever going to do anything like that for people um i'm comfortable in this realm <laughs> um but but anyways thank you always for asking that i you know if i don't know the answer to it i will definitely find a resource that does and i do know a few people that i would trust to send you to uh, that can do these things or offer these services um, and they are kind of on the same frequency satanic frequency or left-hand path frequency so um, I kind of trust these people <laughs> so um, but thank you and thank you for those inquiring about readings those I have done namaste ashe as always um, I enjoy doing it it's I love it um, especially if I know it's helping me <laughs> So yes, um, so let's go ahead and jump into our reading because I'm really kind of excited because these quote cards don't like that reaction th th was what the hell was that? It was weird. That's what I'm be talking. Spirit be scaring me sometimes. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we're gonna do a full deck um, with the Black Flame Tarot. I definitely want to do the Black Flame. I do miss it. Uh, so I, you know, I don't use these enough when I'm not doing this. I really don't. Uh, so. I usually when I use them it is for this and it's kind of like I get to touch the cards and play with their energy and feel them and it's nice I miss them um, so I took a whole break <laughs> all right so we got our oracle um not our oracles our major arcana because I like to shuffle them separately just because I'm weird because um, I want to get one of these and one of these but look I said I wanted one of the uh, quote cards and I got two so we'll see what comes up what usually what comes out was what what's come out everything's pretty normal with the cards we got all uh five cards here um the only thing i'm doing different is uh the black flame pulling the minor arcana with one major arcana so here we go oh what am i doing now i'm trying to i, I was now i'm trying to shuffle these the way i shuffle the mother of gaia cards and i'm just going back all crazy here all right so messages for the collective for this sunday Ooh, you definitely want to come out the wheel of fortune lessons and opportunities <laughs> lessons and opportunities i am beginning to love this card more and more every time it comes out before i really don't think i was that connected with the wheel of fortune and i don't know once i once i realized it's literally lessons and opportunities i always thought it was patterns and cycles like like a circle it can represent that it can because you can have a string of <laughs> a circle of uh lessons because you're not learning anything and you or you keep bumping your head up against like a brick wall and not thinking of something new whatever your reasons are it whatever reason why it's a pattern it can be but then it's nice to also support to know your pros and cons about everything it makes it more realistic more balanced <laughs> um and i think when i thought of it that way something popped <laughs> all right no one died so it's more balanced out when you know that there's also an opportunity in this and if you think about it with every cycle you it's always either a opportunity or a lesson so that's just a relief <laughs> um but this is this is leading it and so i feel like with all of us a lot of things coming up um this week will be like i feel like it's uh something we're familiar with um, it's a circ will of fortune when it comes up. It's something familiar to you. It's some an opportunity that you've had in the past. 
um, coming back around. Uh, for some of you, it could be a new one. It could be a test. Um, the universe speaks in very mysterious ways, it, but it always wants to make you better. Make you what our spirits are doing is trying to get to its highest vibration, always. Um, and so, whether you're going through a negative situation and you may not interpret it that way, usually sometimes you have to fight so you can be a lamb the next day. Um, sometimes you have to fight so you can rest the next day. Sometimes you got to work hard so you can rest. Whatever, 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 you know. Um, and so. It's hard to see that when you're going through a rough time. Um, but it's always trying to make you either stronger, better, smarter, whatever. So lessons and opportunities comes in heavy with this. Um, I'm not going to read from the... Oh, I feel like I should. I'm going to read from the setting book to get a setting's perspective on this card because I know... Um, something's telling me to address the animals that are on the wheel. There's a, I think that's, what is that? A alligator? I don't know what that is. Looks like a wolf. This is some type of Egyptian creature. A sphinx? I might be wrong. But we're going to read the book because something's telling me to read the book um, to gain more information on the, de the artistic depiction of the card, okay? So give me one sec. Hello, I'm back. So we have the book. Um, and so addressing these animals uh, to get right to the point. Um, <laughs> it says, traditionally, it would be the sphinx and an ape and a crocodile. But in this one, they have changed those two. It's the sphinx, the serpent, and a set-like demon illustrated. This is a representation of self-transformation. Um, self realization sorry <laughs> uh it's it's diving into the self and becoming more self-aware um to gain a, a broader perspective and expansion of the psyche um it does mention uh doing shadow work and i feel like um with a shadowy aspect um that could be representing the set like demon as well I'm not sure, I'm not that knowledgeable on the Sphinx, but I'm feeling like there may be also a shadow aspect in the Sphinx that is useful too. With the Serpent, uh, I wouldn't really say shadowy aspect, but more of a transformative cycle aspect, meaning like this is a cycling period. You're going to be going through this again and again and again all throughout your life because you are expanding always, unless you don't want to expand and die. <laughs> But that's up to you. <laughs> so whatever you want to do. What a float your boat. <laughs> I'm not judging nobody. I'm um, not right now. But anyways, so um, <laughs> yeah, so it's the Sphinx, the Serpent, and a set like demon. So that guy must be set because he's red. <laughs> um, and this is our serpent. That does not look like a serpent. That looks like a damn dog. But whatever, whatever. I like it though. <laughs> looks like a dog and the sphinx. So, opportunities and lessons to expand self for and and gain more self realization, self actualization, uh, actualization, and um expanding that psyche and again i feel like the need for expanding that psyche is going back to this these quotes that we led with which is kind of creating your reality my energy creates my reality what i focus on is what i will manifest and this one is like when i lean on certainty and faith being certain of the reality um, and the energy that you put you can change the way you see the world um, as you change your mind so very very interesting um, I feel like uh, maybe this is an opportunity to do that for some of us and most of us and all of us all hopefully all of us all the time to um, to start living a life that we wish to live as magicians to create the life that we want to live instead of living a life that is pre-made and pre-packaged for us who wants that um so we're not easy bake ovens <laughs> like we are incredible spiritual powerful fiery beings so um turn these turn these lessons into opportunities 
um, instead of just getting trapped in a repetitive cycle of lessons and lessons and lessons and lessons um, because spirit will test you to see if you've learned your lesson from the past cycle if you're ready to move on are you ready to level up it's always about leveling up with spirit they're always testing us to see if we're ready to level up because that's what spirit does that's the universe it expands like what does nasa say the universe is expanding and so shall we um i don't think they said that verbatim but something like that <laughs> all right so anyways <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and shuffle for our minor arcana okay so how do i shuffle these cards i don't know <laughs> all right let's ask the assistance in our self-realization self-actualization turning lessons into opportunities on a collective basis so that we may raise the frequency and become gods creating a reality that we all wish to live in creating a, la a reality that is not prepackaged, creating reality that resonates with our souls. Messages for the collective of light and darkness, love and wisdom. Oh shoot, that was a lot. <laughs> we're not doing that. So what we're gonna do is put these back. <laughs> that was a little bit of an explosion. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> okay, here we go, again. <laughs> all right the cars are crazy it's explosive <laughs> that was explosive what is going on here what we got what we got we got the ten of wands hmm i don't even know what to think this is some fiery energy the ten of wands came out in in the the first of july the first of july the ten of wands came out in dreams of gaia it's very weird um, and so I feel like the energy is kind of the same. It hasn't really shifted. It's kind of, I feel like maintaining, I feel a really strong fiery energy right now, um, of creation, just pure creation, create, um, create from an, a sense of, a, create from the center of self create from your authentic self. If you're being authentic, you are on the right path. How do I know if I'm authentic? How do I know if I'm authentic? Why do you do things? Are you doing them for approval of others? Are you doing them for yourself? Sometimes the lines can blur, especially when you're interacting with your illusions and when they tell you things. <laughs> but talk to yourself and ask yourself and see what answers you get. Why are you doing things? Write them down. Um, that is a good way to have a conversation with yourself. Um, hmm, yeah. All right, so it fizzled, it's fizzling out. I'm going to tap into that book really quick just to get, again, a seti in perspective because it's not that I don't know the Ten of Wands. I know it's an indication of um, definitely an ending phase, walking through something new. Um, gaining momentum you've gained a lot of momentum and it, I feel like this is a pivotal point and where we like a pivotal point and keep going because sometimes we can get like comfortable with the success that we've made you have to continuously keep going um, I feel like that always comes up with the 10 of anything um, keep going even though you've accomplished this goal keep going keep maintaining what you've accomplished um, and there's letting go as well as you walk through a new level into a new level there is some things you have to let go some whatever was not necessary for you moving forward um still with that energy um i'm and i'm picking up the energy from the first of july and it feels like uh, the harmony is still present in this card keeping harmony um it as a process of maintaining the 10 of fire so yeah but I, w I definitely want to get what a setting would say about this a setting perspective on this because um you know i'd be doing this for set you know i love them <laughs> all right i'll be right back <laughs> ashe so we're back okay so it was basically what i just said but just the way they worded it, it was so beautifully so i'm just gonna read it back so beautifully see that's why i'm reading it back all right so <laughs> it does mention carrying a great burden of responsibility 
as you use perseverance and determination to continue the process of expanding your boundaries, allowing new perspectives to come into focus. This will aid you on many levels in widening your horizon. So there's a big thing of opening and widening our perspectives, widening our minds as we gain momentum. It's always momentum and you know, you're only gaining momentum so that you can have the power to go to the next level and then get to the end of that and then go to the next one. That's why we need that momentum. Um, but sometimes the energy can be so heavy that it can be crushing. Um, and so be strong, persevere, and use your determination and perseverance, strength and perseverance to endure. And endurance was the quote that I had picked on July 1st. Um, Bruce Lee has said, do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the endurance, pray, well, pray for the strength to endure a hard one. Pray for the strength to endure a hard life. Do not pray for an easy life. Um, and, and that's because I feel like things aren't going to get easier. Nothing gets easier. We get stronger. And I feel like that's just how life is because we're not of this world. We're not of this physical plane. Um, we are multidimensional beings. And so we are far energetically greater than the body that contains our spirit. I mean, it only a part of us is contained in this body and we're connected and so many other dimensions above us and around us and beyond us um, we're connected collectively which is very powerful energy um, and that is energy beyond the people living collectively you know the unit it's just a lot of power um, and so that's why I feel it felt like a really heavy strong fiery energy with this card um, and that's a good thing that's showing that's like the strength of your spirit it's just you just have to carry that um, and endure that that heaviness as you move on um, because you know the levels get more heavier you know so <laughs> that's just how it is um, yeah so that was interesting so I feel like I should be moving on and we're gonna move on to our Damon uh, Goetia cards um, to add for some further advice. They're a little out of order here. Our beautiful Damon Goetia. All right, and we're just going to ask for some advice and insight for the collective with uh, strength and perseverance, determination, and continuing the energetic momentum, expanding consciousness. Expanding the fire element, expanding the air element, messages from shadow to the collective. Where should the energy be focused on right now and assisting us to maintain? Okay. Alright, let's see what we get. Hey, it looks like we got two <laughs> and the bell rings. So that was a confirmation. We have a grandfather clock and sometimes the grandfather clock rings right on time. Um, it's not really working, but a clock, a broken clock is right once a day or something like that. Twice a day or something. <laughs> All right. Okay, we got one I've seen before. The 11th Daemon of the Goetia, uh, Gusan. And this is a major arcana of temperance, which is balance. That's awesome. And harmony. Hmm. Um, I want to say that the planet is Venus, which, which again, Venus can have negative aspects of being cutthroat, um, self-centered. But on the flip side, it's love and beauty. <laughs> so... Uh, you want to balance those energies if you feel disharmonized and you're more on the, the cutthroat, uh, self-centered energy. Balance that out and bring more love and, and enthusiasm. And, and um, Venus to me is always like free-flowing and beauty. Um, and that's also met with Taurus. So Venus and Taurus seems like they wouldn't really match that well, but... Um, 
a Taurus can have a very sensual type of energy as well. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah, so that's Gusan, the 11th daemon of the Goetia. All right. Hmm. He has um, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, but they are cups put up to his eyes, his ears, and his mouth. And so I feel like using those aspects of speaking cruelly, listening to gossip, or uh, lending, your, lending your ears to cutthroat, gossipy, negative, stubborn energy, because I'm pick, you know, I'm picking up that Taurus energy, um, which can have some st stubbornness to it, um, and Taurus on a negative side of Taurus, because we're, we are yin and yang on this channel, <laughs> we look at the shadow and the light, um, the gray witches, so with the Taurus, there are uh, elements of being stubborn, um, and Taurus is really good at being practical, but a negative aspect of Taurus is they can be very indecisive and lazy. Um, and so I feel like there's a sense of that playing into the cups, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Um, and I think through those hearing, seeing, and speaking are some kind of like what you eat. But you know, like what you eat is what you are. And think of those, what I see, what I hear, and what I speak is also pouring back into me um, and creating me as well, energetically. So that's interesting. And we're always going to pick up the book. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now so we can just get them right on top of each other instead of, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm back. And so I was right about those planets. Sometimes I get nervous as crap. Sometimes when I look at these signs, it's not like I haven't seen these uh, signs with the zodiac and planet, but sometimes I get like retarded and I'd be like, no offense to anybody, but like I have like a, a poop moment and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> so I always get nervous, but it is Taurus and Venus. Um, the nature of this card, let me hold it up, sorry. Um, the nature of this card is flowing. So again, temperance, you know, kind of gives, it's like, blah. Temperance is always flowing balance and harmony um, as you flow through these cycles. And I feel like you can apply that temperance energy without a doubt with the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune, to me, it can also be like literally just cycles and rhythms that we naturally go through all the time. When it's shadow work, we flow, use that temperance energy and flow in your shadow work. Actively clean, you know, like clean house. Um, clean it up, you know, and you know, see what is in the subconscious lurk lurking, um, festering. <laughs> and so, um, flow is uh, definitely an aspect of the temperance card. Um, and then the meaning is balancing, balance and healing, balance and healing. Um, and so again, I feel like the healing is this upkeep um, with the self-actualization, the, the self-realization of who we are and our awareness of self and, you know, Again, connecting back to the 1st of June with the self card, being a leader is not about leading others, but it's being your authentic self. And knowing your authentic self takes a bit of balance and healing, not of others, but yourself. Um, and sometimes that can be the hardest work to do um, at times. It can be the, you know, but it's doable. Um, and so it's kind of like you can't ask others to change unless you've made that change. Um, so, you know, and basically. <laughs> so um, it's very interesting. I love that Temperance came out. Um, so thank you so much, Grusun. Um, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. I keep getting that when I look at him. Uh, so yeah, and that flow. So our other daemon that wanted to show up today was Foklore. I might be saying that so wrong. Foklore. This is the Six of Pentacles. 
Um, again, Venus is coming up with that cutthroat energy, love and beauty energy. So I feel like we could have it either or. <laughs> I keep getting that with the Venus card. We could have it either or. We could have it cutthroat and shitty or love and beauty. You know, and it's like are we choosing one or the other are we doing the work when we flow in and out of one one another because that's we're going to do that that's going to happen you're not always going to be in love beauty and and positive venus energy forever you're not that's not realistic that's not going to happen you're always going to flow back into the other area and i feel like if you're feeling like that like you want to stay in the positive one you're probably already on the negative side because you're clinging on to something that is flowing and cycling and you're trying to stay stagnant holding on to water and it's slipping out of your hands so um and again libra <laughs> libra is i feel like connected to gusan with this uh, temperance energy of balance, flow, um, and harmonization. Um, whenever I see Libra, the, the scales, what's tipping the scales, what's keeping the balance. And Libra being a air sign, this is in our communication. Taurus is in our earth, with which is the earthly things that we have, keeping balance with, I feel like, the already established relationships that we have, um, and keeping that balance in in ourselves in a practical way with practical actions um, you, spirit work takes practical work shadow work takes practical work light work takes practical work you know applying what you know um, to your life uh, so it's interesting and then the six of pentacles again i feel ties into goose on it's crazy these came out and i feel like they're like freaking intertwined with each other um but goose sun is earth energy and this is the six of pentacles folklore is the six of pentacles so this is based in earth and it's the six and again five is our conflict number six is kind of getting out of that um and it's like i still feel like there still might be some lingering f things negativity um attached to this six of earth on a physical realm maybe around people who are um like people that you've had conflict with that you're trying to move past the conflict with and I feel like with that, with the Libra, that's going to require some balancing in the communication within first and then without. Um, and folklore is the 41 Damon of the Goetia. I don't know if I said that already. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Yeah, she's she looks like a winged, horned angel tied to some type of boat she's on a boat and there's men in the water let me see her okay is she gorgeous you see the guys the hands help <laughs> but there's more than one of her there's another one in the back yeah so we're gonna um get the book for her folklore and uh i don't know why i feel so confident saying that name maybe i'll just look how the folklore <laughs> all right hold on <laughs> all right so folklore is on point with me like it's just like sometimes when i'm doing these things and i pull out all these cards i'm shocked how they tie into each other so folklore is she kind of creeped me out when it says uh her nature is discordant situations and so that's like disagreeing situations and through that situation finding charity and generosity in that the planet and zodiac is venus and libra so applying charity and generosity in a situation that there's a great disagreement is very interesting um and it, again like i had said like the five is the conflict number six is kind of trying to move on past that and i feel like uh the 41 damon folklore is trying to give you aid and how to get past that disagreement with charity and just generosity um i strongly believe in self-preservation and giving generously 
and charitably when you mean to, um, not because someone else, because people can take advantage of the things that you give. Um, so be mindful of that, mindful, not not to do it, just mindful, aware of it, <laughs> um, so that you're not over giving and then draining yourself. Um, and I feel like that would come through with Gusam with um, the temperance of harmony. Um, so I feel like there has to be a balance of that being generous because harmony, being generous and um, allowing yourself to be generous, generous with someone after a conflict, uh, not because you want to buy the person, but to find harmony in the situation, to bring harmony to the situation. Because, you know, if you're self-actualizing, um, self-actualizing, it, it's because you know this will bring harmony to a situation. You have to take the action. It's you creating better situations by your actions. Very interesting. So thank you so much, my beautiful Damons, for coming out and uh, laying with us. Um, <laughs> harmony and getting past disagreements with others out of choice to bring harmony to the disagreement very beautiful two came out and i feel like they needed to come out together so that was lovely now we're going to move on to our embroidered graveyard here we go Ooh, they're so pretty <laughs> i love these cards they're so lovely okay so Hmm. Messages from the dead to the living in regards to giving generously to the living <laughs> and our disagreements. Strength, perseverance, and determination as we gain momentum towards our highest self collectively. Messages for the living collective from the dead. Okay, let's see. Okay, so too many want to come out. We'll do that again. Need a clear, concise message for the collective, please. <laughs> what is this? Ah! Oh my god! What is this? Messages for the collective. To harmonize. Okay. Whew. Perspective. Perspective. So, we got perspective, hmm, we'll take it, because it, these cards wanted to explode several times um, on me, and I'm not about to go through that again, <laughs> so thank you for that, um, <laughs> let me do an exiting shuffle, because <laughs> I'm like, like the black flame tarots wanted to explode on me. And now Embroidy Graveyard wants to explode on me. So we got perspective. Ooh, more perspective. <laughs> more, I am what I create. <laughs> what I see is what I create. My perspective creates my reality. My energy creates my reality. What I focus on will grow. What I focus on will manifest. When I lean on certainty and faith, I can change my mind about the world I see. How are we changing our minds about the world that we see? How are we changing our minds to change the world that we see? How do we see ourselves that changes our, our world? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, cool. So, <laughs> perspective. I think we got this one before. This is a repeat. I had something to do with uh, magic mushrooms and seeing a different perspective. So I'm going to grab the book just to double check because sometimes I just 
I think I know it, and I just got to double check. Hello. So, yeah, we did get this card again, and I just don't feel that's fair to the collective to get the same card. So, I'm going to pull another one, all right? Um, but let's go over this really quick before I just jump and do that. So, with the perspective, it was about the magic mushrooms. And, again, I'm not condoning anyone to do anything that they don't want to do, um, especially psychedelics. <laughs> but I will say... Um, Microdosing is useful with reprogramming the mind, especially if you want to get deep into the subconscious mind, which sometimes can be hard to do consciously, willingly. You have to really want to do it. You have to really want to change because sometimes in our subconscious mind, there are dark things. Shadow work can be scary sometimes. We can be scary. Um, we have very dark aspects as everything. Nature is both light and darkness. It can get ugly and it can be very beautiful. I like to think of, um, uh, of what's her name? Um, Persephone. <laughs> Persephone, um, how she is both kind of like death and spring. She is like winter and spring at the same time. Um, and so death is the most extreme darkness that one can think of compared to rebirth, birthing. Um, so we too have those two aspects. And um, I feel like doing the deep dark work in the darkness because again light is born of darkness we can really get a lot of power gained in our darkness as as we bring our light into our darkness which is saying our awareness into the dark aspects of self that we're not aware of we expand our light more awareness of your darkness the more you expand your conscious light um, and that's the fog light that wherever you shine your light you also cast a shadow and it's kind of like bringing that awareness to that process um, and understanding that with everything I speak about I do there is a shadow aspect to it and it's just good to be aware of what that is because the shadow can be undermining if it's not if you're not aware because the shadow is only you it's not like some worker <laughs> it's you um, and it's good to bring awareness to you um, because a shadow can definitely undermine everything that you've created um, in a matter of seconds um, it, you know so I don't want to say seconds, I'm a little bit crazy, but <laughs> it can do that. Um, and so, you know, and spirit, like the tower, can bring down a lot of things. But anyways, besides that, it's, it's transforming. It's very transforming. And I feel like there's also an aspect of transforming the way that you see the world. Instead of seeing ourselves completely as individuals, yes, we are unique expressions, but we're also con divinely connected. We are all one God, kind of basically experiencing himself. And so it's kind of like, I feel like my experience with psychedelics has taught me that, oh shit, everything is alive. Like, <laughs> this room, even though it may look in inanimate, it's very much alive. Everything is a vibrating frequency. These things are living. And, you know, what, what causes it to vibrate is uh, this energy. And energy, is it's not just energy. Energy is spirit. Um, so it's you. And um, that was the biggest realization I have taken from psychedelics, um, which is a beautiful thing, is to, under to, to see it's almost like the veil is lifted for a temporary period of time so that you can see yourself um, and see others and see everything and everything sees you. <laughs> um, so it's very beautiful and I feel like it unlocks, I feel like as you expand your mind, you start to unlock different abilities, different things codes different information that's going to assist you to your highest self um being spiritual beings we already have everything that we need but in a physical body in this world that we have created for ourselves which is not necessarily in harmony with spirit um it's very focused on materialistic things um it can be very focused on things that pull us out of our center um, and we have to be aware of that you know and that's the danger of getting too absorbed into collectivism to the point where you get basically absorbed with the wave and you're no longer 
you're no longer a separate wave from the ocean you become one with the ocean i feel like there's a time for each one um but to be aware is being able to flow in and out of both um and still having a sense of what is going on awareness of what is going on uh so that's really heavy <laughs> it came out more heavy than i thought it would beautiful card um perspective again and a lot of this ties into our mind as you expand your mind you are expanding your spiritual experiences thus affecting everything in reality even on the earth realm because earth is made up of spirit it's energy um and energy is you us all of us everything that i need i already have everything that i have is all that i need anything i desire i will receive because my reality is created by me i am successful i am peaceful i am free i am wise i am potential energy and like a phoenix i should rise i am healthy i am wealthy i am power i am talent i am mind i am body i am spirit i am balanced i am enlightened i am fearless i am outside the realm of time i am a part of the all and i am one with the divine energy 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 all around on the outside enemy there was no hate in my heart i even had love for my enemies are ah, energy 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 and so if we can get on that same page of awareness of what we are what the world is we can change the world when i lean on certainty and faith i can change my mind about the way i see the world we are the great i we are the all-seeing i when they say god knows and sees everything that you do that's because it's you you see and know everything that you do you know everything that you think you know all the darkness in your mind you know the negative things that you think you know the positive things you think perspective um that's how powerful we are our brains are rigged and tr and, and and fixed to do this to the point that we believe it um and i i don't know why that is but it is <laughs> Um, it's amazing because it's it can entrap we can trap ourselves mentally um, and we're not physically trapped anywhere we're not we're not limited anywhere but we can limit ourselves because that's how powerful our minds are perspective so we're gonna ask the dead for one more card because I feel like we've done this before just one more <laughs> okay I got a tentacle thing. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's kind of creepy. It's creepy. All right, but I like it. <laughs> mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we got, what is this? Beauty? Wait, what is this? <gasps> I pulled it like this. I definitely saw Cthulhu. <laughs> but it's supposed to be like this. That's a skull lady with these Medusa? Is that Medusa in a skull? Her name's Beauty. That's gorgeous. So first thing, when I flipped it this way, I thought of San Santa Morte, uh, Mother Death, and uh, beautiful, beautiful energy. Um, but then I now I see Medusa. <laughs> okay, so what I know about both of them is uh, with Medusa, she is definitely a protector and i think her name is the guardian or the protector one of the two um so this is i feel like very protective feminine energy not an elder not a maiden not or none of those but just feminine protective energy um I'm not sure. I'm feeling something with these snakes in her hair, but I can't quite pick it up. Uh, so, with Mother Death, um, there, Santa Morte, there is a undeniable love from her. No judgment. It's almost like she understands the cycles and the rhythms that we go through, whether they be negative or positive. We had a, ha a hard life. If we chose certain paths rather than other paths that we deem negative 
I feel like with Mother Death, there is no judgment. She's there to soothe, protect, and heal. There's a lot of healing energy coming from this card. Um, Venus energy. Like, it, uh, beauty makes, it kind of makes me think of, like, the really heightened love of Venus. Now, don't get me wrong. When you disrespect these feminine energies, they, you know, they know how to hit you hard. I mean, Mother Death, for God's sake, she's, she's death. Like... <laughs> She will take you. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I feel really powerful, divine feminine energy here. It's like, and divine feminine energy that is aware of both aspects and utilizes them with wisdom. I feel like this is something feminine energy coming into our our energy to help heal us through these transformation because maybe some of us are going through transformations that we're having a hard time forgiving ourselves healing ourselves balancing ourselves finding harmony with ourselves and thus we cannot find that without without with others so very beautiful i'm gonna definitely check out the book for this card because i haven't pulled this yet and like i said these cards are going to be an adventure for me on this adventure with you with this channel um but i really do love this card i'm happy she came out she doesn't even came out on my alt <laughs> i'm happy she came for y'all <laughs> all right let's check out the book we got the book right her a shade. So this is an awesome card, and I'm so happy I pulled this. This is a good reading for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, it is Medusa. Um, her other name, she's the protector or the guardian. I'm mixing the two, but she has another name, uh, Medusa Gorgon. Gor Gordon. Um, you know, I can't pronounce shit. The point, the meaning, the purpose is it's Medusa, and I'm definitely gonna read you this little this this peace for her because it's beautiful i stared in the mirror i stared in the mirror love gone bad showed me a gorgon i stared at a dragon spewed fire spewed from the mouth of a mountain and here you come with a shield for a heart and a sword for a tongue and your girls your girls wasn't i beautiful wasn't i fragrant and young look at me now <laughs> that is beautiful and so with medusa it's it's this is personifying the energy of being too preoccupied with external energy and the question is your beauty, possessions, and resources will all come and go. And so I totally forgot while I was feeling both Mother Death, Saint Morte, and Medusa here, there's a great, beautiful aspect of Santa Morte where she is a skeleton. Like, there's a big emphasis with both of them about dying we are all going to get old and brittle and die we are going to be nothing but a skeleton all the flesh skin jewelry possessions hair will fall but that's not what we are it's temporary but that's not it's just an avatar it's not the death of you um and it, it's like it's, i don't know it doesn't resonate with everybody i totally understand because everyone handles death differently i respect that I respect your boundaries you have a safe space but I am telling you for those that are ready to hear it <laughs> there is a beautiful aspect to mother death where she is a gorgeous woman but another face to her is this skeleton and there's something about that that hits hard because it's like death is scary it's scary to lose your avatar. It's scary to lose this life. It's scary to lose your beauty. It's scary to lose what your soul has been cocooning in <laughs> this whole lifetime. This is what we know, but this isn't all that we are. Um, and that was what I didn't 
get to say because I I don't know sometimes this I can't say everything that I'm feeling but I felt it but I couldn't the words weren't there yet and so I'm happy that Medusa is emphasized in this but I just want to say I definitely feel Santa Morte vibes on this and it's so beautiful um, it's that Persephone energy of the rebirth, the springtime, the 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 birth, the the green, the the youth, the the beauty, but there's also death, decay. <sighs> I can't. I'm trying to think of like other words. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna push myself too hard. I might fall in the deep end <laughs> and drown. But anyway, so um. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say man I'm mind blown that I picked up on both of them and I thought I was going to be reading about Medusa because it clearly it's Medusa but um I got a reference to Medusa that was very deeply connected to Santa Morte um and these are two cycles and so the message here from the dead is that to remember our ancestors and guides that love us regardless, love us regardless, and see yourself through spirit's eyes. See yourself through spirit's eyes. So it says here that beauty has its uses, <laughs> but it also has its limits. And the question is, where in your life do you limit yourself by just focusing on the physical? That's just one of four elements. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Earth, air, fire, water, yeah. But, like, f there is five spirits, but uh, <laughs> that's just one of four elements. Earth. And you got to pull them all in. Pull them all in because you're not just one. And technically that is limiting yourself if that's all you're focusing on it's good to have beauty and possessions it's good to have these things we wouldn't have them if they weren't here to be enjoyed to gain to have but don't limit yourself in in, in the extent that you become your objects because that's not true that's false you're not your objects these are temporary your even your body is temporary um but Take what resonates, leave what does not, and come back when you're ready. <laughs> uh, so, thank you so much for Medusa and Santa Morte, Mother Death, appearing today for our Sunday reading. It's beautiful. Um, and I think that ties in perspective as well with understanding that you're not your beauty, you, you're not your physical body, you're not this physical world, you are your spirit. And so, expand your eye perspective to see that you are more than just the element of earth. You are all five elements. You are the fifth element. So we're gonna move on to our dark goddess and see what shadow aspect uh, do we need to be guided on for the Sunday reading, okay? So let's shuffle these up. I am just mind blown, bro. Brian, blown, 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 blown. Let me move some of these cards. Those are in the way. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean it like that, but like, you know, Okay. So, messages from our the Shadow Realm Dark Goddesses. Reveal to the collective a shadow aspect that we need to address for the Sunday reading energetically messages from shadow realm revealed to me dark goddess to assist the collective and self-actualization determination perseverance and keeping the momentum to bring us closer to our highest spirit self Mm, and you didn't want to come out, baby. <laughs> okay. Pili. <laughs> Transformation. 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 Let her shimmy a little bit. Look at her. She's gorgeous. We're burning like the phoenix. That's what I got.
Hmm. She's burning, but she's also made of fire. And then there's that huge volcano behind her. There's huge amounts of creative energy. This is massive creative energy. And what's coming through here is a connection with this ten of fire. You see the red? I feel like this is that weight that was addressed in the ten of wands. I feel like this is the weight that can crush us while we move to the next level. But it won't. You're made of this weight. You're made of this fire. You can, you can carry this. And as you move with determination, you will gain momentum and strength along the way. This will transform you through the difficulty will come the transformation necessary. It never gets easy. We just get keep getting stronger. And so with every failure, with every lesson, you are gaining some type of momentum. I feel like don't let the weight of your own soul crush you. Understand that you're made of that fire. And even if you do, you will be reborn again energy does not it you cannot destroy energy it is only transformed so there is no ending for you there's only transformation that feels like an ending <laughs> because you're burning your 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 ending a phase technically you die many times so that's Pili coming through and I will get our goddess dark goddess book so I can read the dark goddess book prayer for us and whatever else interesting things about goddess Pili. Um, I want to mention a couple of things also since this is a shadow this could have something to do with how we're handling these these phases that are causing transformation for us um, because it is a shadow it may be something that we're we are resisting these phases for whatever reason they may be or for some of us it may be confirmation to keep doing what you're doing stay strong stay maintaining stay doing what you're doing um, i'm feeling a little bit of both um and i really feel like it's kind of for those resisting the transformation phase or not really sure where to go because again the weight of the pressure to move on to move forward to level up is heavy here as well and so those under a lot of pressure i would definitely look into what is what is it about the transformation that is causing fear or resistance why do you not want to transform why are you afraid? Why can't you do this? Why do you think you can't do this? That's a better question. Why you think you cannot do this? Um, yeah, that's it. All right, so I'm going to read the book. <laughs> okay, we're back. Hi. Um, and so this is really beautiful. She's lovely. So she kind of feels like the tower to me, like the major energy of the tower it says that she can bring great and significant change she's coming in to let you know now is the time to let go what once was no longer serves you T start taking steps towards your goal change for the better the better is on the horizon she's an archetype known as the transformer of a polynesian or origin um she's known to be uh, the goddess of volcanoes. She devours land and she brings forth new land in equal measure. Equal to the destruction shall be the growth. Hmm. So I'm going to read the prayer. It says, Tempers frayed, time to cool. Fear must not be let to rule. Work with the fire's high vibration. Welcome in transformation 
by the power of the dark goddess in me, protection in place, blessed be. And so what stuck out to me just now was devouring land and bringing forth a new land in equal measure. And I feel like the amount of resistance that we're putting up is going to be the amount of the outcome. <laughs> it's like, I feel like as we pull this way, it's, it's building momentum. Like whatever we're pulling on is powerful and it's going to shoot back the other way just as powerful if you would just let go and move. Um, I feel like the cycle from the destruction to the creation is just as powerful, just as painful. So any of us who are going through destruction periods right now, the, the new growth will be just as rewarding. Okay, trust spirit. Um, because whatever is being destroyed has ended for a reason and spirit is taking it away for a reason. Let it go. Um, but there may be fears there. And maybe that's why I was feeling the resistance. And Peely is here to assist. She's clearing out what's no longer serving you. Low vibrational and bringing in new energy. I would say with those maintaining and feeling a lot of pressure to keep the maintaining who are doing a lot, who may be stressed or um, just feeling pressure sometimes. I mean, we can't be 100 all the time. I feel like that is that creative force that P. Lee is putting into us, is this uh, massive energy to create something massive. So I feel like just stay strong, stay enduring and keep maintaining, stay focused, you know, take your rest when you can, but don't don't rest on your laurels is what they say um and i'm sure you guys know that maintaining so for some of you maintaining i feel like this is a message that yes the pressure is going to be real like you won't feel it but that's only because the creative force within you is that strong that it's going to create something big so you have to just buckle down <laughs> endure keep going and it will spring forth some new growth for you great new growth it didn't it would it nowhere in this card do i feel light energy <laughs> it is my hand has cramped <laughs> um and i didn't feel light energy with the ten of wands either this was very strong fire energy like this i felt it in my stomach it was very uh create just create 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 fire yeah beautiful i hope you get it i hope it resonates with you okay we're gonna move on to our moon card all right our moon card right here i don't know why i talk like that sometimes i just i feel like i'm always like a character off of south park sometimes right here all right <laughs> messages for the collective for this sunday's reading maintaining under heavy creative pressure gaining strength to endure a hard transformative process that will bring us closer to our highest self our highest desires expanding and changing our perspectives messages from the moon oracle to the collective for the sunday reading okay Okay, there we go. That was fast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> more, more, more momentum. <laughs> and we have the first one I looked at is time. Take time to breathe out. Um, and while we do that, we have to... I feel like there's some tending. Like, I feel the temperance energy with harmony... Um, when to tend, when to rest. You know, you can't over you can kill a plant by overwatering it, you know? Um, so it's like that energy. Know when to take time to breathe because I feel like you're going to need it. We're all going to need it with the Peely energy and with this uh, Ten of Fire energy. We're going to need to rest from time to time. We're going to need to take some rest but keep going 
the reason why I say keep going is because of the second moon that wanted to come out, which is the waxing moon, which is the revealing of all your fruits and labors. And this says energy is gaining momentum. Energy is gaining momentum. Take time to take a breath. And so I feel like we are all right where we belong. Just take the appropriate action in whichever whichever part of the scale you fall on and make sure that action is true to your authentic self make sure that those actions bring you closer to your authentic self your highest self that was a very beautiful reading very intense very lovely um i enjoyed doing all of this with you um, I want to thank all my cards, my daemons, <laughs> my goddesses, my shadow aspects, my spirits, and my guides, and my collective for being here today with this reading. You have a wonderful Sunday. You have a wonderful month of July. Swim in these motions of the oceans. Do your shadow work. Do your light work. Um, keep doing you and be happy and be all true and authentic. Namaste. When I'm up on, I'm way too blowed. I drop my flow and split two rows. Now when I roll my head, new zones. Yeah, I flow in tune with my soul. God, flow in tune with my soul. God, 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 God flow in tune with my soul. God, yeah, God.